work, mortals of the earth, for the princessin has graced the bounteous lands with her presence. Heed with utmost scrutiny as one recollects the arduous hymns and tales of the princessin and the many endeavors of star systems ago. Fischl is one of the most eccentric and exuberant characters in the entirety of the game. She's an endearing and charismatic individual who has a lot to say about the world around her, and most often looks to her and her familiar for guidance. She arrived at Avot after being exiled from the other world, and through her adventures, she observes and weaves the threads of fate, together with her familiar. Her namesake, Princessin de Furutailong, or the Princess of Condemnation, bears from the title that all creatures, notorious or noble, will fall soon into the realm of the princessin, the Imenakterek, or the realm of the eternal night. Her loyal companion, the knight suffering Raven Oz, Osvaldon von Hafvarines, stays diligently by her side, and together they are the world beasts who swallows all dreams. However, at the end of karma itself, the princessin will grant all the gathered souls her benediction. The princessin roams from many universes, and she has lived to see myriad of new sights. When looking through Fischl's constellations, one would see the tale of a powerful entity of many worlds. And perhaps it is a hint of Fischl's true nature. Yes, she walks amongst mortals now, but do not be fooled. For entropy always begot destruction. Pilgrimage of the Bleak and Wings of the Nightmare is a somber tale of the souls who have gathered under her benediction, and that she was once a lone pilgrimaging princess who reached the kingdom of eternal twilight. There was a time that the plebeians of the kingdom dare refuse her of her lineage. So, when all is hopeless and perilous, she spread her wings of darkness and fought for her salvation. Gaze of the Deep and Against the Fleeing Light tells the tale of her realm of eternal night, and that her left eye, the Og Devor Urtailong, is the eye that judges all that enter her domain. Devourer of all sins and Evernight Raven are the monikers to the world beasts, and that both Princess and her companion will swallow all the dreams and cleanse all the sins of the world so that the universe will be born anew. The universe will come to accept the reality of the princessin. Every speck of the star, every shadow lingering in the abyss, and every world that bears test the will of the princess will be born anew in its immortal light. The fantasy world is one of the best escapes from mortal life. One could dream of bright blue skies on a rainy day, or believe thyself a hero from a story despite living a mediocre life. It is a prospect of being so much greater than what truly is. To indulge in it is quite entertaining, and even tempting in most cases is the prospect of being lost in your own phantasmagoria. Amy is the name of a young girl with a dream, a fascination and a vibrant imagination. Those who know of the young blonde of Mondstadt were aware of her antics. The fascination she had for the literature was no small feat, and her ability to weave together words and tales of her own as if she had experienced them made her an expressive individual. There came a time when she was invested in a certain book, however, that completely changed her life. Flowers for Princess Fischl, being born into parents who were also adventurers. In the old corners of Mondstadt's library, young Amy would be found ruling over Imanaktairak, summoning her thundering retribution and carrying her deeds as the Princess Endeavor Urtailong. She deemed her journeys within the pages with a smile. And with every moment she spoke to her parents about Princess Fischl, she held all her words dear. She tell him of the times the princessin fought valiantly for her nobility, 
and her father would call her his own Princess Fischl. Her days were always colorful, jumping in between tales of the princess as the days go by. But not all were receptive to young Amy's love. She was often cast out by her peers due to her obsession for fantasy novels. And she often felt sad and lonely because there was no one else that would share her own visions and fantasies. She would be belittled and mocked by those who refused to accommodate her quirks. But she would always keep her head high because she's Fischl, her father's wonderful princess. And she would never surrender her nobility and dreams, for they are a princess's rite of passage. However, the girl who dreamed must awake, for no dream was eternal. Fourteenth birthday, her heart shattered upon hearing the once encouraging words of her parents slowly become what ruined her fantasy. Amy. You are now 14 years old. It's fun to make believe, but eventually you will need to grow up and put your childish dreams behind you. She could not stand it. So she ran. She ran and found herself in the library she once called home, in the deep crevices of a land familiar to her to the comfort of the place she would hide when her parents were absent, to the clutches of a world beyond the insults of those around her. In Mondstadt's libraries, she was safe. And it was there where she felt the small glow of a purple jewel and a soft flapping of otherworldly wings. Fischl's tale is a fascinating one. It's a tale of a young girl who only sought refuge in the safety and control of literature. A girl who was once lonely but found a companion that she shared an eternal bond with. While Fischl is definitely the most eccentric of the Mondstadt bunch, it should be realized that her entire character revolves around the freedom of expression and dreams. Throughout her life, though she was mocked for her own fantasies, her love for the literature is constantly expressed in the way she represents herself and art. There are three key things that I want to show emphasis on that make Fischl such an interesting character. Firstly, Fischl is still quite aware of her existence as Amy. A lot of people say that she has grown quite delusional, and perhaps may actually be having cognitive dissonance from her reality and the fantasies of flowers for Princess Fischl. However, we are aware that while she does incorporate the princess into her backstory and weaves it into how she presents herself to others, there is still a part of Fischl that is very aware of who she really is. Like when she broke character in 1.1 and when she would confide in a traveler in the Serena Teapot dialogue that there were those that were distasteful towards her actions. She is a fantastical person, of course, that loves the theatrics of it all. But as seen in her story 5, she is aware that her and Amy are separated. She does not try to erase Amy from her life. She even says that one day, Amy's story will be written. But it does seem like Fischl does want to put a firm line between how she shows herself as Amy and as the princess. Amy is happy whenever others would also respect and indulge in her character as seen in her story too when she is bashful and delighted when others would also adopt her speech mannerisms to accommodate. Which is quite a fascinating thought experiment because this shows that while Fischl does enjoy indulging herself into the role of the princess, she does not deny that Amy is still present somewhere. The second point is now this. What is the princess to her? Amy's life is mostly spent in the library because her parents were usually absent for adventures. It wasn't that she had willingly neglectful parents but we know that Amy is always mostly alone. And we know that her own peers are quite judgmental of her interests. Therefore, it isn't unfair to say that the princess became a coping mechanism for her to feel more in control of her life, and much more important in the grand scheme of things. After all, it is only human to react that way. 
the princess and David Urtailon certainly gave her a catalyst of importance. And since the princess was such an admirable and noble figure in the tales, would it not make sense that she would also fashion her own ideals that way if she wants to achieve such elegance and exquisiteness? She regards things in her life like how the princess would. She calls her parents Kaiser and Kaiserin Derver Utailong, adopts the speech pattern befitting of aristocracy, and even calls her vision the Edelstein der Dukelheit. It, it's all just a massive form of roleplay. It is almost similar to living through the character's successes vicariously, but to a much grander scheme. The princessin is simply Fischl's escape, a form of freedom from reality. We do know that Fischl is relatively young. In the story 5, she was 14 when she first met Oz, and also 14 when she became an investigator for the Adventures League. In this instance, we see that the princessin, while she is a character formed by Amy's fantasies, is also a healthy way for her to better her confidence and how she goes about her regular life. The princessin will always be her motivation, and we see in her stories that her own roleplay has had a good impact in both her personality and ideals, as well as her career path and adventurer's guild job. But let's shift the focus for a bit from Fischl, and more of towards another fascinating part of her character, Oz. The prospect of a vision giving birth to a familiar is actually quite unheard of from other playable characters. But in the world of Tevat, it seems that a vision giving birth to another talking entity that is seemingly alive isn't really uncommon. We don't see other characters beside the Traveler and Paimon who are new to the world, be shocked of Oz's presence, and merely just accepts that he is a familiar. So what does this mean? Given what we know from visions, they are embodiments of ambition, and that they are signs of power, not sources. What we can deduce from this is that Fischl's desire for companionship is what led her to manifest Oz, and the want to not only be regarded by someone genuinely as the princess in Durfur Utailong, but also not be judged for her own interest is what he embodies. This has a lot of implications when you realize that Fischl and Amy are two separate characters. Firstly, Oz is a translator, which would make sense because Fischl used to and is still mocked for the strange way she speaks. But she also finds great pleasures when others happen to understand her. Oz being the medium would be the perfect embodiment of that desire, to have a way of easing the communication between her and her peers without sacrificing her roleplay. Another is that he is the manifestation of Fischl's out-of-character persona. The line between Amy and the princess's personalities are actually very well defined when considering Oz. Oz tends to have a much more casual means of speaking and happens to voice things that Fischl would normally rush out, like about her laundry and her favorite food. Oz could very well be a mix of both Oz from the books and Amy's true personality put in a familiar to guide her. A good note here is when they seem to have switched personalities when confronted in 1.1's ending. When Amy slips and drops her persona, it's Oz that suddenly speaks like the princessin. Of course, Oz does see himself as his own entity, and has spoken quite against being thrown first head into battle. It would make sense given that Fischl's ambition would birth a living, breathing entity if she truly believed and yearned for a world where the princessin and Oz were truly real. Fischl is peculiar in almost all regards, but although this be the case, one shouldn't deny that she is a determined individual, and that whatever mixture of the princessin and Amy will always be who Fischl truly is. A young girl with grand dreams, both in and out of reality, that wants to strive for the best in her life, so that she too can follow in the footsteps of the mighty Princess Fischl. This script was longer than I thought, but that's honestly okay because I really want to cover Fischl. Fischl is such a humane character for me in a way that no other character could be because, let's be honest, if we're playing this game, we at least want a form of escapism. I am so glad to have covered Fischl in this one, and honestly, I'm excited to see more of her even though her dialogue is super long. But nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. Please check me out on Twitch and Discord if you want to see more of me. I actually do have a genuine question. Do you think it would be a good idea for me to set up a PayPal or a Patreon? Of course, there would be benefits for those that donate, but I do genuinely just want to see the opinion of the community. But with that out of the way, 
My name is Aster and thank you, thank you so much for studying with me.